So we go through the opening. This is all perfectly fine. And here I was saying after b4, a5 is a good move because uh, white cannot keep his structure. He has to either take or sacrifice a pawn. In both cases, uh, he's worse. So a5 is very typical. If white plays b4, we see this also in the Sicilian lot, a4 asking your opponent to react to either take, which he doesn't want to do because he's left with his pawn on a3, which is weak, or advance, but then you, in this case you can just take. And he has no way to keep his structure, no way to protect the pawn. So a5 was a good, good choice. All right, so a6, bishop b2, again a5 here, of course, you're not going to play a6 and then a5, but still a5 was the best move here. Once again, same same deal to play against this weakness on the queen side. Bishop g4, take, take, knight bd7, d3, queen b6, and now you're preparing to play a5, finally. You could have played it earlier. I guess you were afraid of b5, I'm guessing earlier, but b5, not enough compensation for a pawn, I would say. So now your pawn plays bishop takes f6. Bishop takes, also knight takes f6 is quite nice here, uh, because white cannot keep the pawn, right? He has to take, and then once again, very nice pressure against the pawn a3. But also bishop takes f6 is good. Rook b1, take, take, queen b5, nice move, stopping white from playing b5, which he wanted to do, obviously. So this is a nice prophylactic move, queen b5, and also preparing knight b6 and all of that, knight b3. But here, take the pawn, free pawn, take it. What's the problem? Ah. I guess I see what you were afraid of. Probably knight d2, yeah? Because, okay, knight a1, I can just... Um, I can just move my queen a3 and um, the a1 knight is also hanging. Well, let's... Maybe there's a smarter way to do it. Just go to d6 because now after rook b7, the, the knight is protected and just rook takes a1 wins. So, knight d2. Okay, so um, I'm guessing this is the move you were afraid of. And uh, white wants to win back the pawn on b7. Makes sense, right? So, let's see what we can do here. I mean, even if you just play queen d6 and play knight c5, <coughs> rook has to go all the way back. And knight a4, this looks quite nice. Getting knight to c3, I mean, this looks very nice. But I'm wondering if there's anything stronger even. I'm wondering if there's even something better. Is this completely ridiculous? Maybe not. Maybe we can just hang on to the pawn like this. It's a funny, move, move, funny looking move, but you have to consider all moves. And uh, this might as well just work. We'll get out of the pen eventually and just be a pawn up. Queen b3. Well, that doesn't do anything. I can just take and it doesn't help. Also here, queen b3, uh, one move earlier. Uh, even this one is hanging, the, the knight on d2, but maybe I don't take it because rook takes b2 followed by queen takes b7, but just um, takes, knight takes, rook a2. But this should be pretty good. 
this should be pretty good. It seems like black is holding on to the pawn and uh, it's better. But okay, now, sorry. My apologies, I didn't prepare this well enough. I didn't quite understand what you were afraid of after queen takes b4. The problem is though, if you move that, it allows white to go d4 followed by knight c5. And that's really, that's an issue. So my guess is that you maybe didn't see d4 coming. Because the knight on c5 will be so annoying and uh, just will be annoying till the rest of the game. So that was really a critical moment uh, where you, I guess, didn't really acknowledge the possibilities of your opponent. Okay, rook a2, knight c5, knight b6, rook a1, queen c4. I think it's much more natural to play rook ba8 here to defend the rook on a2. Because, okay, if white takes on b7, you take on b4. It's no problem. Okay, queen c4, e3, bishop e7, queen b1, takes, takes, rook a8, queen b1. Rook a7, that was a nice maneuver to get the rook to a better position. Rook c1, queen b5, bishop g2. But now queen e2 is a mistake. I mean, this looks uncomfortable, right? He's threatening bishop f1. But in fact, you can just go knight c4, bishop f1, create some space for the king and also stop um, white from going queen f5. And white really can't make use of this pin. In any way, if he goes queen b3, you just take on c5 and go knight d2, unpin yourself, and you're not losing any material. But okay, one needs to uh, calculate this precisely. The problem with queen e2 is that now if bishop f1, you, are, you have a problem because um, after, well, you cannot go to a2 because white just takes and takes on b7 and c6 is hanging. So you have to go to uh, h5, queen d2 just seems to lose after rook c2. So queen h5, but now the queen is way too far away from the king side and white plays this typical minority attack move here, b5 against the castle structure. And uh, this is very uncomfortable, obviously. I mean, white has all the pieces perfectly placed and you are clearly worse here. So. That was a critical moment, definitely. Queen e2, a mistake. All right. Your opponent misses his chance. He played queen f5. And now queen b2, b1, queen a2. It's all good. Queen just looks active on f5, but it's not threatening anything. So this was well played. Bishop f1, g6, nice move. Pushing the queen back. And here you actually had a chance to go knight c4. And white is not able to take this knight right now. And if he moves the queen, you can stabilize the knight of b5. And now you have solved all your problems immediately. If you get this position with the knight on c4 and uh, play b5, you're completely fine. Because now, white has no targets, right? His only plan usually is to play b5 and to get his minority attack and to attack the space of the pawn chain, the pawn on c6. Now you can't do that. You cannot play b5. His only uh, move left is to go to something with e4. But okay, it just doesn't work because you take on c5, take on e4. And White can never take or never wants to take on c4 because you get a protected pass pawn. So this is a very nice position. All your pieces are active and uh, you're better here. So that was a nice chance. But maybe you just didn't know this kind of maneuver to play knight c4, play b5, which looks odd at first because <clears throat> you have this backward pawn on c6, but with the knight on c4, that's really no issue because white will never be able to attack this pawn from the c file, right? With the knight on c4, can never get rid of this knight, obviously. Um, so b5 is possible, and the knight on c4 very unpleasant for white. So rook a3, queen d1, rook a7, b5, and here 
you should have taken on c5. Knight c4 is a mistake. Um, you should have taken on c5 and then go just knight c7. Also knight c4 is possible here, but just knight c7, the position is roughly equal. The problem with knight c4 is that white always has this option b6 available, which is annoying. And uh, after bishop takes c4, uh, queen takes c4, it's even worse. Here you can still play d takes c4, and the point is that after b6, rook a3, knight takes b7, you get counterplay with c3, and you have sufficient counterplay just in time, uh, not lose against this pawn. But after queen takes c4, um, b6, you're in a losing position. So maybe you just missed this move altogether, I'm guessing. Um, rook a8, knight takes b7, rook b8, and now white has a nice tactical solution here, knight c5, the point is after bishop takes c5, intermediate move rook c1, followed by d takes c5, and you can resign because there's just nothing to do against the protected pass pawn on b6. So, tactics, I would say, uh, were needed here, and uh, you didn't spot that, but fortunately the opponent did not either. He took on c6, okay, and now this is just, just fine. Here, actually, you could have tried something again, you could have taken on c5. You play it the other way around, um, but if you take on c5, okay, if now d takes c5, you can now trade queens and you're better in this endgame. Why? Because white has this weakness on a5, your rook is better at c5, your rook is better placed, you can always attack from the side and this rook has to stay passive. So you can try a little bit, it should be a draw, but you can try. Um, and if queen takes c4, maybe this is what you didn't like, d takes c4 d takes c5, okay, but even here you can play rook a5, obviously it would never be worse, uh, but you can also try king g7, because white doesn't really have time to go rook b6, because then the pawn is running. running. Um, so here actually white still needs to be precise. So maybe just, could be that you didn't really consider bishop takes c5, I don't know, maybe you didn't like to have to double pawn on c5, but it's very concrete, and uh, just another move to consider. After take, take, though you took at c5, which is fine. Um, you could have also kept the bishop, play bishop d6, but okay, I think bishop takes c5. It's easiest to go into rook and game because of the draw. But we still have to be careful. Never um, let our guard down. Here, rook c7, it's the wrong square. Stay active. Stay, put the rook on a6. Usually, I mean, it's just a rule of thumb, but usually protecting from the side is better than protecting from behind. Um, I mean, I'm not even sure if this is an accurate rule of thumb, but in this position for sure, because you're not allowing white to activate his rook and you can always annoy white from the side. Now you're just gonna bring your king, uh, play h6, not allow g5, and uh, play king d6. Then you can move your rook again easy draw, right? So that would have been the way to go. Okay, rook c7 doesn't spoil anything, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult, it feels like. Okay, king g2. Now you played f5. I mean, I would instinctively just bring my king over to d6 to free my rook. So that would be my plan. King f3, king e7, king f4, and now not allow king g5, just play f6, play king d6, and okay, white can still play a little bit, but should be a draw. Okay, f5 is also fine, but it's also weakening your position. We have to consider this as well. h6 is good, king f6 is good, king f3, but now no need to go g5, I would say. No need to play g5. Just play king e6, I would say. The problem is after g5, here, after h5, your position is close to losing. It's amazing, but um, true. <laughs> you, sh you needed to play king to g5, of course, very ugly move and uh, not a move one wants to play. But the problem is after h6, g5, there's just uh, this issue with g4. 
which your opponent didn't do. Actually, we'll get to this position in a moment. Um, but the problem is that White is perfectly placed with his pieces and you're passing and you can just watch how White is improving his position. The issue is that here White plays f3 and now if you just wait he takes on f5 and he plays e4 and it's game over already. Take on d5, take on c6, that, that's it. Um, so in this position you're forced to take but White takes with the king, plays e4 I think this is just losing for black. White is too active and uh, even though it's, it's incredible, right? Uh, it's very reduced material, it's still all equal, but white is so active that he's trying and he might as well win here. Your opponent missed his chance, he played rook a5. And now you should just stop g4 altogether by going g4 yourself. That would have been, I think, simplest. King e6 is also fine, but now after g4, you go back and uh, allow your opponent to transpose to what we just saw, right? If your opponent went rook c5 here, it's the same position we had, and um, it's probably very good for white. So instead of, instead of king f6, it was necessary to activate the rook, go rook f7. And this is a draw. You can now defend the pawn c6 with your king, and... I don't think there's much white can do. Your opponent missed a chance to, uh, to play rook c5, he took, and now there was another, another critical moment. You handled this well from here, and uh, it was a draw in the end. So, what can we take away from this game? I think a lot. Yeah? There was a lot of positional. Uh, issues in the beginning already with this pawn structure a3 before that you can just attack it immediately with a5 and then later on allowing white to play d4 and put the knight on c5 that was not necessary uh, you could have played differently there and um, then also this this chance to go knight c4 play b5 and you're completely safe and you're pressing and white has to defend so those were positional issues, then there were also some tactical issues, of course, which is very normal, if, even you can see the game of, games of top-level grandmasters making also tactical mistakes all the time, um, especially, I guess, Queen E2 was a, was a big moment, and also these, these moments when White could have played B6 just end the game. I think there was the, the biggest chance for White just play B6, take on B7, pass pawn on B6, you can probably not defend. No, you cannot defend against this. Um, so this is just, of course, just tactics and looking for all the moves, always having a guard up, checking everything, attacking moves, always checking exchange moves, moves that attack something, both your moves and your opponent's moves. That's just, that's what you need to do in chess. Otherwise, you always overlook something. You always got to check those forcing moves and forcing moves are moves that take something, moves that check something, moves that threaten something, right? So you always got to check those moves. Um, and then we had some endgame difficulties for sure. Um, in the rook endgame, which looks harmless, right? But you're passive and you need to be active, especially in, in, in rook endgames, activity is everything. So placing the rook on c7 instead of a6 was the first inaccuracy. And then you were too eager advancing your pawns, I think. You should have just keep your pawn structure intact and then you can definitely defend but by going f5 and g5 uh, your pawns became weak and um, that was a problem then later on if your pawn played with f3 and e4 all right let me check the chat see if there are any comments ah i see you you are watching now. Let me see what you wrote. Walking in the pin was no need at all. Yes, f5 was to stop e4 threats. Okay, so you're saying f5 was played to stop the e4 threat, but maybe e4 is not a threat. Let's see this. Let's come back to this moment. So king g2, so you were afraid of white going e4. 
but it's okay. Okay, first of all, okay, now he cannot play it yet. And if he plays, okay. If he goes f3, he can still go f5 if you want to. I'm not sure if it's even necessary, but. Oh, I guess you mean this, this, and d5. Maybe this is what you're afraid of, yeah? But just king e7, and uh, it's white who's fighting for a draw here, it seems. Because he cannot keep the pawn. And uh, if king f3, king e7, e4, now you just take, okay. Obviously, there's no problem here, right? So let's see. Oh, you said there was some there was some time trouble involved. Okay. All right. Well, that's also very normal, of course. So again, this annoying. Okay, so I'm just sorry, guys. Should be. Why is this okay? I'm not sure where this is coming from. This line is just odd. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Sorry about it with the uh, bad line in the middle. <laughs> All right. So let me know if you have any questions, but otherwise, um, in general, from the two games we saw today, I think biggest biggest area where you can work on is um, tactics for sure and then also end game i would say especially in this in this uh, second game here it felt like you weren't really um, familiar with common principles for example putting the rook on a6 uh, having it more active right these common principles like activity and um, getting a king into a game and so on uh, those are very very important in the end game and tactics well i would just recommend you to solve let's say half an hour of tactics every day that could be already uh could make a big difference i think